In my previous video, I told you three router bits that I think everyone should have in their collection. And now, well, I'm going to give you three more. Well, hello folks. Yes, I'm continuing our series on router bits that I feel are essential for you to have in your collection. Now, if you didn't see the first video, there is a link for that below. Um, this is going to continue with what I feel are the next three that you should own. Now, if you're looking at this and you're wondering, well, how can I get my own tabletop router table like this? Well, I do have plans below in the description and it also comes with a step-by-step -step photo PDF so you can build this. All right, without further ado, let's get into our first router bit for today. The first bit we're going to be showing today is the OG molding profile bit. Now, I use this bit quite a bit, and what I like about it is depending on how you have it set up, you can have a real simple, basic mold to it, or if you set it in a little bit deeper, you can see you have a much nicer, more elaborate, decorative molding to it. So let me show you right now how I set both of these up in the machine. The OG bit is set up pretty much the same way like we did with the roundover. Once again, the bearing is flush with the fence, and depending on how high up or down we have our bit, it's going to make a more dramatic profile on our piece. So once again, I'll show you. And so you can see we just have that slight S shape going. Now I'm going to set it deeper. So when I say deeper, what that actually means is it's going to go deeper into the wood which actually requires me to raise the bit up out higher on the router table. And just like before, we now have this little step which helps catch light and shadow, making this a more dramatic little decorative trim piece. Next up is the quarter inch slot cutting bit. Now this bit can actually do several things. It can, just like that spiral upcut bit in the other video, it can make a groove for you all the way down it. But it can also do things such as putting a groove down the edge grain and you can also then with the same bit make a tongue to go in it to give you like some plank flooring. If you make the tongue on some end grain you can make a groove with a mini tenon. So very functional bit that can do many things. I'll show you the setup for that. This bit, like the other ones, also has the bearing on it, which again, in line, flush with the fence. And I raised it up. Since, since this is a quarter inch, I raised it up a quarter inch. So hopefully I'm going to hit the middle of my board here, which is three quarter inch, to make a groove. And so there's the groove for it. Now I can also use the same bit to make the tongue. It's a little bit more set up, but it can be done. So let me set that up and show it to you. So this took a little time to set up. I lowered the bit down and I did a couple of practice cuts to make this work. But what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to try to cut a tongue to go into this groove using that same bit. Now 
All right, so I got a little bit of a little bit of wood left on there. Oh, that comes off nice and easy. And let's test the fit. Nice. I have a tongue and groove joint now. Okay, now I can do. I can do one more thing with it set up just as it is. Using my miter gauge again and another sacrificial piece of wood, I'm now going to cut a, a tongue on the end grain of this piece. And now I can have a mini mortise and tenon joint. The last bit is the cove bit. Now the cove bit is primarily used to make moldings that have like fluted columns down it. And although it works well for this, I honestly don't really use it a whole lot for this. However, if I'm making jewelry boxes, well, this bit actually has a very cool little trick it can do. And let me show you both of those setups. With the cove bit in, uh, what this is primarily good for is making fluted columns. And what I mean by that is I've already run the cove bit down the center of this board. And now I've marked uh, two equal spaces on either side of that and I have the fence set up for it, the distance away for it. And so I'm going to push it through that right now and show you. All right, there we are. We have our fluted column. Now, a couple things I want to point out on this is that uh, you noticed when I was pushing this through, I had the push stick on it pushing it forward, but I also used my push block to ride next to it, and I'm putting pressure on it, keeping it against the fence there. All right, now I will say that I don't use this fluted column or this fluted uh, piece a whole lot, but I do use this uh, for several other things, especially like jewelry boxes. And I want to show that to you right now because I think you're going to like this little trick. What I did was I brought the fence forward so just half the bit is being exposed out. And I've already gone ahead and made a OG profile going all the way around this board. Now, Let's say that you're making a jewelry box, and instead of this box just being flat, you want to give it a couple of little legs or feet. Well, here's what that bit can do. I'm going to start it, and I'm going to slowly work this board down in it, move it forward, and then pull it out. Check this out. It gives the impression that it actually has legs or feet underneath it. And so here is my jewelry box that I used that little cove bit trick on it to give it some legs. Now this jewelry box is a little bit different from most because the lid doesn't open on it, but it actually splits down the middle to reveal six little drawers in which you can put items in it. And if you're interested in building this jewelry box, I do have plans available. Just click on the link below in the description and you can find it there. And so there you are. That was three more router bits you can add to your collection, how to set them up and use them. I hope you enjoyed this part one and part two series on this. I'd like to take a second, thank Woodcraft for sponsoring today's video. Their goal is helping you make wood work. Now, if you have any questions on a woodworking project that you're doing in your own shop, feel free to write me at woodshoppingtime at gmail.com. Because after all, my whole goal is to make you a better woodworker. 
Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, keep on dancing. <laughs>